Mbula and welcome to The Lens at 177. On this show, we are so delighted to have with us the Assistant Minister of Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation, Madam Sashi Kiran. Welcome to the show. Nimbula Vinaka Felix and to the people who are listening in today. Thank you. Um, you are someone who is very um, well versed with the grassroots community. Uh, you've done a lot of work with uh, the impoverished, low-income earners, women, marginalised women. Um, in fact, I'm going to I'm going to remind you of something you said in Parliament uh, in your maiden speech that a common name does not give you a sense of belonging, but dialogue and being accepted by the Vanua. So, can you just speak a little bit about that? What what does that, it's very deep. Like, what does that mean? One of the things that I think as children growing up, uh, when we used to see chiefs not understanding enough about it, growing up in the yeah. settlement, there was a reverence towards the chiefs at that time. Huh? Um, but relationships are not just built by law, by a name. Right. Relationships and love and respect is so much more deeper than that. Yes. And for me personally, Seeing that relationship, and I'll say to you, Felix, that I think we've had deep relationships. Right. When we go back to archives, and you know, um, when our people used to run away from the torture, they used to run away to the indigenous people at right. the time. And one of the things that pains me is when I see history in isolation, like when we commemorated Ratasukuna Day, it was only about Ratasukuna's life without any mention of Indians or Chinese or other people, Melanesians. Right. But when you see his speeches to legislative council, you can see that he was concerned about them. Like he was talking about excess land be made available for you know, yes. tenancy. So right. you know he was impacted, but the authors have written, and same thing with Indian history. And maybe we had had more uh, historic, uh, like more historians, um, more academics. So they've written extensively about Girmit. Right. But the Girmit was not in isolation. There were Melanesian people who were slaves uh, just before us, and they were working side by side with people of Indian origin. Right. They were working side by side with indigenous people. And one of the things when I was reading, the misconception that it was Fijians had it good. Right. But when you read about mm -hmm. it, there was black birding of indigenous regions that were picked from, say, Levuka and taken to another place to work. Right. And there were people in on a they were controlled by a bully. And when the colonials needed them, they would be taken. You know, and as a group, you know, I uh, mm -hmm. heard uh, some of the chiefs talk to us about it. So it was. We all were suffering. Yes. But uh, indigenous people have not written enough about their own history because they're oral tradition people. We have written a lot about our history. Mm -hmm. Melanesian history is not as documented. I mean, there's quite a bit, but not enough, I think. Then people of Chinese origin, they were one of the first ones to come in. Right. And they, mm -hmm. you know, they jumped the sandalwood trade. They lived in on the, some of the islands, like in the Lao group. Unless we acknowledge ourselves, right. we could be a different nation if we acknowledge that we've our ancestors have worked together, lived together, cried together, laughed together. Yes. And how come in 150 years we're not talking about one history of Fiji? Oh. Yeah. A superimposed history of all of us. Right. So I think relationships are deep. We need to acknowledge and build on it. Right. And that just doesn't come through a name. Not a name change. Not a name change. Yes. Um, you know, uh, I did accompany you to um, Naivilada when you went with uh, uh, Madam Shami Mali on a visit there. And I noticed your interaction with the villagers there. Uh, it was almost as if family was coming to visit family. Could you speak a little bit about that relationship? Actually, it's more them than me, right. uh, I would say, because I grew up in the West. I was not so familiar with the with Reva when we first started this process. But I guess because in their heart, they've always had, they, they tell us stories of how they saw the ship lying there. On the, and then for the last hundred years, they've been telling that story of Indians being brought and Indians buried in our land and they belong to us. Right. And when I took the Kamananga, the love in their hearts were flowing. 
and it's very obvious like if I go in and sit in the affection that you see yes. with elders um, it used to surprise me like if I just go and sit and any elder would come you know they'll tap and they'll give you the fan it, like you could see they would express their affection right. in the Fijian way but you could feel the, the overflowing love so I think it's them having carried us in their hearts and it's us who have not acknowledged it so every time I go I feel it so how, how do we bridge that gap you know you have um, apart from uh, people like yourself who acknowledge that relationship and the respect that you have for the Vanua how, how can we bridge the gap for the others other Fijians of Indian descent who may not have you know there's a lot of work to be done and I'm grateful that uh, under the leadership of the Prime Minister there is a strong commitment towards this right. uh, we do want one history uh, if you remember the president has called on during the Girmit celebrations that our history our collective history be taught in schools right. um, so we first of all need to acknowledge and make that work there but I think we need to evolve the empathy and I must say our people because of the history you know they were fighting the British and then things changed and then they, you know it was all about education growth the next thing it was you know coups or something or the other we haven't taken the time to learn enough about the Vanua okay. and because of the constant movement they did not develop those relationships with the land you'll be surprised to find the concept of Vanua is very much related to our, our relationship with land and things back home in India right. well not my home but you know I'm my grandparents home and if you see you know how they worship the river you know you say they worship everything right. but they, they worship the river they worship the tree they, you know they had this relationship that you know river is a giver of life river you know tree is a you know giver of food and you know cow is a giver of milk kind of thing so they had these relationships and when you look at the rituals birth right. to death rituals both are very similar right. but we've been focused so much on differences that we have not really acknowledged that you know there's so much in common yes and we need that narrative and we need and then just uh, learning a lot from the chiefs uh, and I've been blessed that they've been able to talk about some of these things how we've exchanged our own cultures here yes you know they were saying oh we used to have green uh, cover before the drying came in when the you know people of Indian origin you know talked about drying they told us how to tuki and they built those drying there's so many things that have exchanged right. uh, they said you know we, ne we didn't have the tradition of garlanding we used to garland ourselves and then go to a function you know like to celebrate now the garlanding tradition has come from the Indian context right. and we have borrowed so many things without even recognizing it so I think it's time to just pause and acknowledge we if I go to India or if I go to any other part of the world I will not live as an Indian like Indian from, from India because my experiences here has colored me to be a Fiji Indian you know like right. my whole experiences and who I am is not my roots in India it's yes it's part of that in DNA but the Fijianness is what defines me a lot right. And you'll see that in our diaspora. Yes. You go anywhere, they they hold everything dearer to Fiji. And you know how we've developed Ramayan Mandalis and and you know groups to keep our social yes. groups together. That's completely broken down in India. Right. And and most other places where Indian diaspora has gone. Yeah. yeah, but it's still alive in Fiji. But Fiji Indians, wherever they have gone, they have kept it alive. 100, 200 Mandalis in each one of those cities they are. Right. Unbelievable. Yes. Thank you, uh, Madam Minister. And uh, we'll be right back after a short break. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first.
Welcome back to the Lens at 177 and we are, we're having an interesting conversation with uh, Assistant Minister for Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation, uh, Madam Sashi Kiran, about race relations. Um, there was some observation during the Girmit uh, celebration that maybe it would have been an idea to have uh, representatives of the colonial government present to, uh, you know, uh, speak about their role in everything that happened uh, in Fiji uh, at that time. Any views on, on that? <laughs> That's a hard one, Felix. But I'll just say uh, that British High Commissioner is aware right. of that sentiment. We've had some conversations about it. Yes. And there will be some more conversations. Like, you know, it, mm -hmm. it, they're very much aware of it. Yes. And uh, in future, they would be coming out to talk about it. Right. But remember, it's not only the colonial role, it was also CSR. Yes. And uh, uh, Australia. And mm. So there are so many players, mm -hmm. and uh, they certainly were reaching out. But more than anything, it's important that we heal the relationships of people living in this land. Right. There's not much we can do about the past. We can only learn from it. Yes. But there is a lot that we can do for future. Right. And I don't know whether this is appropriate to say it here. Yeah. Um, I'll bring in somebody like Richard Naidu. Right. So Richard, and without his permission I'm saying this, so Richard, <laughs> <laughs> during 87, uh, was an activist yes. who he was beaten up, he was jailed, his right. whole family suffered, his yes. parents suffered. He went to New Zealand, he came back. Yeah. You know, like we can make choices. Huh? So he came back. And from that time till now, while he's busy doing his, you know, money making thing uh, or, you know, his uh, running his law business, right. every time there's injustice, he stood up for it. Yes, he has. And you see people like Richard and people like Ratha Chaliman Rai Vivi, things happen at that time. They learn from it. They forgave. Right. Whether it was Ratha Chane or Richard, there's no bitterness in them. Right. Many people have carried the bitterness. Yes. And some people have chosen to heal themselves and heal the nation. Right. Because 60% of our youth of this country don't remember 87. They don't remember 2000. 2000 was far worse than 87. Right. I mean, you know, any coup was bad. Yes. But what we've done is we've carried on a narrative and we've wounded our children. Mm -hmm. The children who were born in a new, like they hadn't experienced it, but with our lived narratives, our stories, they feel wounded by the different coups. Right. Or you could be Richards of the world and say, well, this happened and th things are changing and I'm going to be part of the solution. Right. And he, mm. Mr. Jen, I'm ready, gun was on his mm. head. He decided to work with you know, Prime Minister Rambuka right. and change the nation. So it depends on us whether we go back to mm. past and it's important. We always have to look back and right. know where we've come from. But you and I can decide to heal. Yes. And decide to heal the nation going forward. Yes. So while it's important to hold everybody <coughs> accountable for the past, I think, at least for me personally, the focus is what do we do to build a better future for our children? Right. Maybe we can start with education. Oh, you of know, course. Uh, uh, teaching uh, culture to the different um, ethnic, uh, ethnic groups, maybe an idea to start there. There's a lot that can be done and a lot, we, the subtleties we are so ignorant about. So you saw in parliament when an MP said things he shouldn't have it said. Right. You saw the speaker said, you're from Sabu Sabu and I take responsibility. Right. Speaker was not responsible, but as a chief, and this is something sometimes we don't realize, the subtleties of things. How many times the chiefs take responsibility and see the bigger picture right. and try and shift things. And at least with my experiences with the chiefs in my you know, short history of working on this, I have always been so deeply impacted by the vision. Yes. You know, we don't see the chiefs in 
uh, many people probably don't talk to them. They see them up there and they think, oh, you know, they're, they're such and such. But I, I've sat and spoken with many the issues of concern of environment, yes. of youth. I remember talking to some of the chiefs, they talked about how things have changed and they're worried about the youths. Right. They're worried about crime, they're worried about river pollution and how it's impacting their food. Mm. I remember Tisuva talking about how many boats are sunk in Suva Harbour and exactly where and how it's impacted. You know, yes. the, It's amazing how much they take responsibility for the Vanua. But because they don't talk about it, right. we disregard them. Mm. And some of them, the way they speak about it, I would think of it as like a climate change scientist, scientist is talking to me. Right. You know, like it's very, yes. very deep. Yes. And one thing also that has quite moved me is whether it's chiefs from the Kandrove, whether it's Turangati Dakao, or Tuisuva, or Marama, their understanding of different people of Fiji. Right. It's quite amazing, you know, they can talk about Melan like Melanesian people may feel, oh, you know, we are outsiders, blah, blah. But the chiefs, when they talk about them, mm -hmm. they understand their suffering. Right. I'll tell you when Ratu Isoa, um, you know, Turangatui Nodo, the late Ratu Isoa, passed away and we were going for a funeral. Gwanamara Mbale had food separate for Indians. Mm -hmm. She'd organized it, saying, uh, Indians may not be comfortable coming from far, eating where there's pig and you know beef being right. cooked. She had a separate table and separate food organized. Right. Their sensitivities to the people of the different ethnic groups, yes. at least in my personal experience, has yes. been very, very moving. Right. And I don't think we acknowledge that enough. Yes. I know they don't want to be acknowledged, they don't talk about it, <laughs> but I'm just telling you my experience. Yes. Uh, has had a huge impact and I think for me personally I need to learn so much more right. you know yeah. the culture the nuances yes and how they have kept us together right. we've had some very challenging times but you know for me it's easy to judge what you did at a particular time without knowing your realities right yes you know mm. if you remember the interview with the late Turangatri Nodo uh, he was asked in one of the interviews, were you there in parliament in 2000? And he said, yes, my people were there. And, you know, as a chief, I went there and I was there. And then the question to him was, so how did you accept these people who were, uh, like when we took our Kamalanga to Tinodo? And he said, but this is an old story. You know, mm -hmm. these were our people from before and these are buried in our land. So they're, they're different context right. of emotions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of, re of their realities. Right. So we are their people from a particular history, but if their current people are in a particular space, they will be there. Yes. And I think you need to open your heart and your mind to a different re realm to understand that. Yes. Very interesting. Uh, we'll now move on to um, issues facing children. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's interesting you mentioned the chiefs do discuss um, social issues affecting the people and, uh, and this one has to do with uh, something you said about um, how youths were eating bread with glue and you know it's, uh, it's become a real crisis mm -hmm. with glue sniffing now eating and uh, drinking hand sanitizer and stuff like that so you know we know what the issues are how are we going to address these issues? Uh, I think, like with Palm, um, moving parents, children, broken families, right. there's so many things to worry about mm. that it's just not easy. Right. Uh, having said that, there is a multi-stakeholder meeting uh, mm. going on uh, where we're trying to see how do we rehabilitate these children. Right. We're working on you must have heard Minister for Youth talk about a rehabilitation center, Yes. Uh, a drug uh, rehab center. So we're working on how do we quickly try and get the children, at least the ones we know on the streets, uh, off the drugs, but also yes. give them some something to fill their soul. Because I think when you have a hole in your soul, you know, like yeah. when you are crying out for something, people reach out to, to the peers. Right. And if the peers take them in the wrong directions, that's where they go. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of talks about importance of family meetings, uh, importance of how do we emotionally support our children. Right. Um, 
to become the people they could become. Okay, we'll speak more about this when we return from a short break. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back to the show. I'm here having a conversation with Assistant Minister for Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation, uh, Madam Sashi Kiran, and we've had some interesting discussion about uh, children and uh, how they are facing a lot of issues with glue and uh, alcohol and all that sort of abuse. And uh, now we'll, we'll move into another area, the National Action Plan. Uh, uh, against violence against women. Um, everyone knows what the issue is, you know how bad it is, uh, domestic violence, child abuse. So the action plan, you know, when are we going to see it rolled out, actually rolled out? Okay. When are we going to see something happen on the ground? Well, it's being rolled out. There are right. already some milestones uh, and you'll see that at least the four ministries have got budgets, specific right. budgets, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Youth, Tokyo Affairs. Right. Um, so it's very much part of everybody's work plan. Right. Come hit this budget. And uh, you will see that it is a very integrated plan. So it's a whole of government approach. Yes. So in the next six months, you will start seeing movements. Uh, having said that, while the government is taking a whole of government approach, I will um, welcome a whole of society approach. I mean, how right. in a village you can see a woman being beaten to death and 10 of us are standing there and we don't stop them because we say that's a personal business. Right. Violence cannot be anybody's personal business. We're right. losing our children, our, you know, mothers, our daughters. And then the violence seen by the children, you know, so it has to be a whole of society approach. If somebody hits somebody, yes. there's somebody watching. Right. So each one of us can take responsibility or remove the man, you know, from that space and say, well, you know, it's time to calm down and maybe we, we can talk about this. Right. But you and I, all of us have to take this responsibility because government, mm -hmm. through policies, through budgets, through, uh, you know, their action plan can do only enough. But you and I are in the communities at night when people are drinking, when people are beating, you know. Yes. So, so, so don't be a bystander. Basically. Don't be a bystander and don't only wait for government to do it. Government will do it. Right. But each one of us has responsibility. I think about this, Felix. I was quite shocked when UN said to UN, UNICEF said, 60% of our children go through, boy child, goes yes. through extreme violence. Right. 60%. Right. That means six out of ten children, if they go through extreme violence and they are not healed, mm -hmm. then that anger, when you are bullied, you end up bullying somebody else. Eh? Right. So we need to think through how we're treating our children. What are they exposed to? Mm -hmm. If our children are exposed to pornography, that's what they're going to trial on others, and you see, you know, increase in um, child sexual abuse. Right. If our children are going to be seeing violence. That's what they dish out. And we're creating this whole cycle. Yes. So how we treat our children and how do we uh, play out at home is reflected in what society we live in. Right. And that society is you and me, each one of us. Mm. So changing how we want to build society of kindness, of empathy, is something I'm hoping that all of us can work towards. Right. Uh, it's interesting you speak about uh, pornography and exposure to pornography, um, but there's no actual study uh, being done, well none that we are aware of, in Fiji on uh, the extent that uh, children do view it, how they may be influenced by it, 
Is this something that the ministry might Actually, be looking at? Actually, there are some studies. Uh, I can't quote you right now on top of my head, right. but there are studies done on the use and uh, of or availability in the communities. Right. And I've heard ad hoc stories of how men in communities or community halls watch it with children. Right. And I'm talking about five, ten years ago when we in, in the communities we hear these sorts of things. So that's what I'm saying, you know, each one of us has to take responsibility. Yes. And how many things you're going to control? Okay, let's let's shut down porn sites. Let's shut down glue. Right. Then they're going to find methylated spirit. Then they're going to find, you know, suki. Then they're going to keep finding things. So we can keep shutting down and we will regulate all these things. Right. But there has to be a lot more at home in terms of values, in terms of discipline, in terms of right. directing ourselves to constructive things. I think, you know, we all know empty minds, you know, breeds yeah. evil. Yeah. Um, I think we need to in- encourage more sporting activities, more, uh, you know, gardening, uh, yes. creative activities, which we're working with with street kids. How do we engage people so they feel valued? Right. How do we, uh, you know, make sure that they're creative with their time and their energy so they don't have time for all this? Right. And again, it's the whole of society approach. It's leadership at every level that we need to, that needs to take responsibility. But starting from the home. It has to be from home. It has to be from home. Um, Rodney and I, my colleague, the cameraman, we were out uh, at Tristan Gardens not long ago with a gentleman who's um, uh, doing some work with homeless mm-hmm. young boys. And what struck us is quite a number of them want to go back to school. Mm-hmm. They, they uh, you know, they, they want to, but they can't see a pathway for them to go back to school. Some of them don't want to go home for whatever reason, or maybe they can't go home. What work uh, is being done in that space? Yeah. So with street kids, uh, we the multi stakeholders uh, are working with them to try and figure out rehab, and then depending on what they're interested in. There is school available for to absorb them in, in education if they're interested. Right. If they're not interested, then Ministry of Youth is working on skills training right. and finding a pathway for jobs. Right. So that is definitely work being undertaken right now and you'll see some um, outcomes or, or we'll be able to come back with you with some concrete timelines in the next few weeks. Okay. Um, possibly my maybe my last question. Um, has there been a survey done of uh, people living on the streets? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, is that data available to us? Yes. There has been surveys done uh, over the years mm-hmm. and more recent. Um, but these are shifting people. So one day you can see 35 kids in Ladoka City, then the following week you'll see them gone. Right. You know, so they, this is a very shifting uh, community. Yes. We are also finding some very small kids. So some four-year, five, uh, not five, uh, four, but six, seven, eight-year-olds on know, the streets as well. Yeah, uh, coming out at certain times. And we're trying to connect with the parents to figure out why are, to, are they coming on, on streets. We're finding mm-hmm. girls. So we do have numbers, but they're shifting people. Right. And also what I found in Dolomani home in Dotoka, right. which is spe- specifically created for street people, the numbers are going up. Mm-hmm. So we have to figure out, and they're doing profiling right now, to figure out why are people coming on the streets. Yes. It's cold right now. Yes. Uh, and uh, is it easier access to food is it easier access to because what we find is you give three to five dollars to a child and they run off and get glue and four of them are having glue you know like so what is it uh, and mm-hmm. that work is being undertaken as part of this rehab work okay so we should see some results soon uh, in the next few weeks you will be mm-hmm. able to know no. exact actions and how many children are being taken into which kind of spaces for rehab there's uh, people interested in uh, helping street uh, kids and people living on the streets. Would it be advisable for them to work through the ministry or to do work on their own? Uh, it depends on it, depending on what they're bringing to the table. Uh, right. There are some churches working on their own, but they're in touch with us. Right. There are grand musicians like Cyril Serevi who's come on board and said, mm-hmm. "I'm happy to teach these kids and mentor them, you know, and, and take them." So there are many players who are coming along, mm-hmm. and. Uh, 
we will see how do, does each one of us play a role because the government can't do everything. Yes. And we really appreciate people with talent, with skills, but also understanding of our people. Right. You know, our people are just not numbers. They yes. come from a cultural background. They come right. from a family background. There, there is nuances that are very specific to Fiji. Right. And people who are working with them, when they understand it, like for example, uh, when we are seeing Fijian youth, some of them are so talented, mm -hmm. but they're not great communicators. When right. you talk to them, they look down and they'll scuffle in the carpet, yeah. and you know. So how do you actually communicate with them so they do come out? Right. So there are um, teams or organizations that have come forward who understand, who've worked with them before. Right. And we really appreciate the help in this. Yeah. Um, sorry, the, the reason I asked the question is uh, child sex abuse mm -hmm. is an is a risk. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not knowing who the, these other players are, what their intention may be, you know, uh, whether the ministry was concerned about that as well. So the task force that's working now uh, will be working with different level, different age groups and where they are and they're working they'll be working with ch churches but there's ministry of youth in our ministry and different ministries involved in working with them so hopefully we'll be able to you very rightly pointed out see mm. who are the people on the streets because yes. child sexual abuse is a, is a challenge right. uh, we've had a very interesting discussion with uh, assistant minister for women children and uh, poverty elevation madam sashi kiran thank you thank you so much, so much for joining us and I'm sure we're going to have her back on the show. Um, to watch more of our show and other videos of uh, national interest, you can always visit our website, www.fijitimes.com, or our Facebook page, Instagram, or Twitter platforms. Binaka.